Shifa <laughs> for the last talk of the day. Uh, I would like to introduce you to Niki Takadan, uh, who has a piece called uh, Lucid Skin. Lucid. Lucid Skin. Lucid. Which is a collaboration with Antigona, who's here, actually. Would you like to join us? in the theater of Santiago de Lili. It's a program that takes many, many hours to watch the whole thing, but you can come back and see all of the various uh, elements. And within this day of programming, there is a program, a sub-program, called Letters from the Front. A letters, a letter from the Front. Letter. Letter from the Front. Letter from the Front is, was curated or organized or selected by Nikita Kadan and uh, Julia. Coletti worked on the project here with us. Um, and it was the fastest exhibition I ever put together in my life, that's for sure. Uh, because one day I called Nikita to see how he was. It was shortly after the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, what day was that? February 24. Yes, but I called on February 27 or something. Yeah. And I was just calling to see how he was and where he was and if everything was fine. Uh, and to express my dismay at the historical turn that things had taken. And uh, Nikita picked up that he didn't really want to hang up the phone. So we spent a long, long time talking. And at the end of this long, long conversation, there was an exhibition. Um, <clears throat> and the exhibition was, of course, media-based works, because the fact that um, the country was closed because of the invasion meant that we could not ship any works, but we could email or Dropbox or WeTransfer works. So uh, uh, Nikita put together with many artists, including Antigona, um, a series of films, uh, video-based works, single-channel works, that he will tell us a little bit about in a moment. And um, it became an exhibition which opened a week later after that, I think, about one week later, uh, as a program for a, a short amount of time here. And although we didn't uh, promote it abroad to other museums, something quite extraordinary happened, which was that uh, museums from all over Europe, Moderna Musée, um, the Kunstmuseum, Hauter Kunst, um, Trondheim Museum, Lille Museum, they all were writing to us, wanting to take the exhibition. So it's become not only the fastest exhibition we put together, but also the most successful in terms of touring. Uh, and uh, I think that everyone felt all over Europe that it was a very urgent to, to do this. And um, however, I want to go a little bit backwards. Uh, Nikita uh, and I worked together on the Istanbul Biennale, where he, in 2015, he created a piece called Shelter which you can see on the internet, pictures of, <clears throat> and it was a two-layer, two-floor piece in the Museum of Modern Art of Istanbul. And on the top, there were animals within a kind of a rough area with also tires, with an open ceiling as if a bomb had gone through. And the lower level was a, was a shelter where there were beds, like a bomb shelter. Uh, and there were mushrooms, however, growing, or something like that. So. Celery. Celery. So, <laughs> so, celery. 
So that piece was referring to the invasion of Donbass and Crimea uh, of 2014, which had not really been noticed as much, obviously, as it should have been, um, as a sign of something that was coming. So at the end of that exhibition, sadly, Nikita was a young artist. I didn't have a collection to build in the museum. Uh, we took it apart, so it was destroyed. We have the, the image of this artwork, which is very beautiful. And so um, Nikita is here also on a site visit because we are going to work on a new version of Shelter, which we will make during his artist's residency here, which will start as soon as the war ends, <laughs> hopefully, because now Nikita needs to go back because the special dispensation was only for 10 days or two weeks. Mm -hmm. And as a m m male man, has to go back to uh, Kiev. So uh, Nikita, just tell us anything you want about Letter from the Front, your work for shelter, uh, anything that you think you would like to speak to that I just yes, brought thank up. Thank you, thank you, Carolina. You already told uh, a lot about Really, uh, the selection of four words was done, in fact, in one day, maybe part of, yeah, maybe this day and uh, part of the next one. Okay, then during three days uh, I got their responses. And uh, these people uh, were in very different situations. Some mainly female artists, already became uh, refugees. Some were uh, like re displaced inside of Ukraine. And uh, some even didn't uh, take their laptops or hard drives. So the works which were like uh, on uh, Vimeo on YouTube, they were available. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one uh, was uh, in a mental health hospital because uh, like uh, during her try to escape she had uh, this breakdown. Uh, so uh, people in a very uh, different personal situations inside of one catastrophic war reality. And uh, anyhow we uh, composed this selection and uh, I have a feeling that uh, it uh, has a uh, certain uh, poetic and certain informative aspect and really tells something about uh, Ukraine and uh, about uh, certain logics of transformation which led to the current war situation, like including logics of relations with uh, Russia. Uh, so uh, <coughs> we described uh, through the war, but uh, uh, building the ornament of uh, Yuri Lederman, you could see how like the standards of Soviet speech, Soviet uh, thinking, you know, this uh, thin and delicate internal codes of closed society which uh, develops its own, like, uh, Aesopian language. Zombie? Aesop, Aesop, Aesop. Oh, Aesop, like the fables. Yes, 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 Aesop language. Mm -hmm. Aesop of Yazid, like in Russian. Uh, right. And uh, yeah, you see how it transforms to a pure absurd, how, you know, entropy of, uh, Thinking and speaking uh, step by step uh, destroys all these internal codes and conventions of post Soviet societies. How these post Soviet relations uh, fall apart. And uh, there is one moment when group of Odessa artists and also some uh, stand-up actors sit on a balcony in the center of Odessa and uh, they drink wine and uh, they have like, this very special Odessa-style talks 
but uh, then one of them stands and starts from the balcony pronounce famous uh, speech of Joseph Stalin when uh, Nazi Germany intervened Soviet Union. And it happens like out of the logic of the talk, uh, just, uh, you know, as some, you know, like prophetic, prophetic speech, like he got some spiritual impulse and he start to tell his premonitions from the balcony to the people around or the works of uh, Yaroslav Futrimsky uh, with a transparent flag, with burning flag, with him standing on a big stone, on a place of revolutionary manifestation from 1905, with his left fist, placed like this, but it is burning. It's covered by some burning material, and his left hand is burning, giving a lot of black smoke or uh, works of uh, Antigona or Alina Kleitman about uh, like Kiev underground queer scene about uh, this freedom of, and uh, diversity between Ukrainian young people and uh, it's so different from this Russian propaganda narrative of nationalist and ethnically and culturally homogeneous Ukraine who is based on like a pure resentment and just hatred to mother Russia. Oh, yeah. Which is the narrative that is constructed in Russia. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> and the real Ukraine is so different and just when you look at this uh, like Kiev underground like club techno music we have seen you understand that uh, all this Putin's image of uh, purely nationalistic Ukraine uh, is a pure bullshit. Uh, and uh, yeah, lots of other stories. This uh, exhibition letter from the front is full of stories told in very different manners, mainly very poetical, but uh, also very political. And the title, A Letter from the Front, is taken from iconic socialist realist pa painting from Russian uh, official Stalinist artist Alexander Lokhionov, who, by the way, uh, was uh, one of uh, these, uh, you know, like predecessors of uh, hyperrealism. Like first uh, Isaac Brodsky in the uh, 20s and 30s. Uh, due to his photography a lot, depicting like Lenin's speeches and some uh, sessions of Politburo. And then Alexander Lokhionov started to make like this post-photographic painting. And uh, I took the title, which is also a certain uh, code of post-Soviet cultural community, like everybody from uh, like this elder artistic community in post-Soviet republics, Obviously knows what is a letter from the front, it's most front, uh, where a group of uh, people somewhere like in central Russia meets an injured soldier who are returned like, uh, from the front, bringing uh, letters from other soldiers and reading them to their mothers and relatives and there's so much sun and everybody's smiling and believing that victory will come very soon. Stop me. Okay, that's a letter from the front. Um, so Nikita, what about your own work in this, uh, in this exhibition, which is the collaboration that you did together? You, would you like to talk about this piece where it's quite, hmm, let's say, extreme and expressionistic and sexy and death. <laughs> uh, it's um, Nikita's stories. He uh, wrote to me just like a, in a messenger, like a text me this story. And uh, I, when I uh, uh, read it, I 
think I very I, I feel this atmosphere feels just tragedy and uh, I uh, was very excited and uh, uh, ready to shoot it and um, uh, we uh, start uh, make a good uh, uh, script um, and uh, it, it's a, a true story um, from Nikita's life uh, and his uh, uh, problem uh, and uh, his thinking about that uh, because uh, the main of that story it's uh, text uh, which uh, uh, explain uh, um, all, uh, I think, all uh, troubles in your life, uh, all uh, faults in your life, comes to be uh, to better side, but uh, you must to have a f brave and uh, yeah, and life and death uh, to understand this proce process. So um, I think um, uh, we had a good. Um, Work. Uh, somebody uh, tells that it's very cruel to use uh, uh, some uh, uh, problems uh, from the other people uh, to yes, show it, so to, to exploit. Yes, and the uh, problem. You mean the cutting? Yeah, self harm. Somebody wanted to be exploited. Uh, you wanted to be exploited. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, for. Um, uh, uh, a lot of people who saw this film say that uh, uh, I also has this, this problem like that, self-harm. I never s think that uh, somebody from my friends also has this uh, problem. Cutting. Uh, cutting, yes. And uh, when I uh, showed this film, uh, a lot of people uh, was very great, uh, thankful uh, about that because they are saw the situation in another side, and uh, and uh, that's why uh, for me and my practice was very important to show uh, a dark side because it's uh, when you sh you uh, see that you can make a, another way. So. Um, you must um, have a choice to do this, uh, but you have it that if you never uh, see this all in the, another picture. Is it the, the film where there's also the bones? What? Is that another film? One is all the bones. Ah, Rave on the Bones, yes. <laughs> Rave on the Bones, it's uh, one of the... Uh, um, I have a, a big project, uh, it's called And the Story of Disease. It's about all uh, Ukrainian underground area. And the uh, three videos, it's about the war. I shoot it uh, from the uh, 2016 till 20. 19 and the uh, race on the balls it was shooting on 2017 in odessa uh, in the uh, ex uh, um, factory uh, uh, where uh, uh, killed the animals, the animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and uh, uh, i was um, very um, disappointed about the war from the past because the war actually started yeah, uh, eight years ago uh, now it's uh, in a full ukrainian uh, but uh, in those times it was uh, only in donbass and Lugansk. and uh, and also in the uh, this time a, ra a culture of race in ukrainian uh, start to be very huge and um, uh, I uh, thinking about that a lot. Uh, that one uh, part of country in the world, another party, uh, part country in the race uh, and the parties. And uh, uh, it's not about that. I'm not agree with the, the race. <laughs> I'm a love, I'm a fan of music, and uh, I'm a, a monster party <laughs> actually, and uh, I, I love this. But. Uh, uh, it be honest, it's, it's like a madness, like you are dancing in the, uh, in the dead. And uh, uh, it's a video uh, um, about um, absurd, absurd of evil. I am uh, 
performing there without the, my bros, uh, like a devil, uh, who um, make uh, some dancing, uh, and uh, also I'm um, damp a war, uh, like uh, to, uh, to save people that must be a peace and love. Uh, and the uh, idea from this is it's devil safe. <laughs> and uh, I am uh, very um, in shock uh, uh, because in my country I totally destroyed uh, all our uh, clubs, culture, uh, what was very huge and uh, I um, Mm, very um, uh, disappointed <laughs> about that because um, it means that uh, all freedom what Europe gives to us because uh, a key uh, calls a new Berlin and a lot of people from Europe comes to us to this raves uh, to hear a uh, real music to hear an uh, atmosphere to hear to feel a freedom, now it's, uh, they can dance on the bones, mm. but they don't want to even came, <laughs> because who wants to do this? And uh, I, I think uh, in the future, very fast future, someone will stop it, because it will be, uh, I think, not only in Ukrainian, so... Um, we must be uh, together. Uh, I'm sorry uh, about my political uh, feelings, but uh, a really uh, in Ukrainian was a super cool uh, young people who are created, who are wanted to be freedom, and it starts to be more, more normally. No, uh, uh, everybody uh, makes a music, makes a love, and it was wonderful to see how your country grow up and now it's destroyed and now everybody uh, like all people can't do nothing and it's awful and this will be not uh, I, I very hope that uh, uh, the war will uh, end very very soon I very hope that but I know that a, a long time will be uh, not uh, growing. I know. Yeah. yeah. So, do you think it's also a reaction to the repressions uh, to decrease the COVID? I know this sounds strange, but I was just thinking, in terms of Georges Bataille, that there has to be a dépense, you know, that there has to be an energy, a waste, and if you don't waste, it accumulates and then it explodes. Yes. I, I very hope uh, that it will be some huge stop and explode and there will be a peace in the world, uh, that, that's fine. But it has exploded in Ukraine. But it uh, didn't explode uh, inside of Ukraine. No. Uh, it's not that uh, society was so oppressive. But yeah. Auntie Vanna is saying that it was, that there was a loss of a sort of life, freedom in the club scene uh, that was before uh, this war. Uh, society became oppressive during the war. And, uh, oh, you mean after Donbass? Yes, huh. exactly. And COVID limitations, okay, they were, and maybe it wasn't so easy for the clubs to earn, and maybe. Uh, lots of uh, young people felt this hunger for the parking, but uh, as I remember, lots of uh, key for uh, underground clubs they found a way how to uh, like follow these uh, like protective measures and same time how to go on with clubbing. Uh, so I uh, was at the parties. Between lockdowns, there were limitations, yes, and that were like uh, reasonable limitations, but anyhow, parties went on. And now, 
No, uh, no, of course no. Everybody uh, for a few in the evening. Uh, just uh, you will be in the street uh, without documents and you made the shot. Yes, because uh, it's a limitation of time and if you in the yard of uh, you just go to security and the, if you have the comments it's good, if you not have something it will be big problems. Are you afraid? You know, uh, like first days after February 24th, uh, my mind was like uh, blocked. Uh, I decided that I just uh, look all films of Ingmar, ba Ingmar Bergman and when uh, I uh, watch them all, the war will stop. <laughs> but uh, in uh, three days, uh, like uh, some uh, close people started to write and call me and uh, demand that I should go to the shelter and then I went to the gallery which was in a basement floor actually it was a uh, bomb shelter during a uh, cold war during Soviet times and uh, I spent time with so much energy and uh, uh, I felt no fear let me five interviews each day yes, and uh, yes. having uh, like uh, really many many tasks uh, like related to both like telling the world what is going on and uh, doing my work as an artist and organizing some project of like Ukrainian visibility in uh, outer world like like letter from the front and so on and so on and later I uh, was involved uh, as a curator in a work of a residency for internally displaced artists like uh, we now host in uh, Carpathian mountains like for example people from Mariupol is a city which is 70% uh, devastated and there are small towns in Ukraine which are just erased which 100% devastated uh, and uh, yeah, when I was dealing with all this, I started to be like a bit... Uh, uh, Crazy. Yes, uh, in a changed, transformed condition of mind. But uh, for first months, when I was in shelter and uh, I was uh, just uh, acting like doing a lot, but uh, quite similar things. It was like uh, this, you know, Fordist labor, like on production line. When we turn to a post Fordist regime, when you have to be so like inventive, I turned really nervous. But uh, then, first months, I felt so okay. I felt so well. Uh, and uh, when uh, you know, when uh, missiles and bombs fall from the sky. You turn fatalistic, uh, you understand that uh, if you are not uh, in army, then maybe not so much depends on you. At least on the level of survival, because all these like, cultural projects, projects of Ukrainian visibility, they um, couldn't like, just stop selling. Uh, we could. Uh, repeat again and again, close the sky, close the sky above Ukraine uh, or start the full-scale like, gas embargo but for Western politicians and for Western econo economics, uh, economists it's uh, like uh, two big challenges so we turned uh, just to some like rhetoric playing with Western feeling of guilt uh, so okay, uh, during first months I was really happy and felt no fear. Now I'm a bit neurotic because uh, 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 now we have to be really inventive. We understood that the situation is really for long, mm. that uh, it can cross the Ukrainian borders and move to the west, so uh we are really in one uh one burning building with uh, people of Europe. 
and uh, I feel that lots of people of Europe already understood this. So now we have uh, to be really invented. Now we have to look for new solutions. We didn't stop them uh, in a simple way, like in a direct confrontation. And they couldn't conquer, like capture, get us. They uh, couldn't succeed with their like blitzkrieg. So now it turned to war for years, but we had a frozen conflict for, like, I would say, uh, for six, seven years, because uh, first two years it was an active war. Then it turned to frozen conflict, and uh, on February 24th, f 4th, it uh, turned to a full-scale invasion, and then to what we can uh, call genocide. Now they just uh, kill plenty of civilians in the cities and villages which they get. They uh, do like just senseless killing of people and senseless devastation. Uh, yeah, uh, so okay, uh, my thought is a, a jumping from uh, one subject to other, but uh, answering your question, uh, yeah, I feel no fear. of uh, war and uh, I will uh, idea is that uh, during the war you should stop crit criticize your government and stop any internal critique it could work Genius for a while, and then uh, you will return to this. But what to do with wars which go on for years and years? For example, if we would start criticizing our governments since 2014 till now, we would turn to a conflict, really. And uh, then we have to combine like uh, the war and uh, the war which is not only about Ukraine and Russia which is about uh, Ukraine, Russia and at least Western world at least uh, which is about uh, keeping our democracy alive and uh, which is about uh, I know a uh, changing of mind of people of Europe. Uh, lots of whom are still not ready to face the reality of Like, for example, German decision to like uh, stop supporting Ukraine with weapon means that German betrayed Europe not betrayed Ukraine, because they have no right to support us, but they are part of European unity. And uh, European unity has its interests, and this interest is to stop Putin. So you're, uh, but you told me once on the telephone that you wouldn't shoot, you would take. So now you're speaking about arms. Isn't that a contradiction? Uh, you know, uh, I... I remind start to speak about... Uh, uh, Caroline, I would uh, like uh, not to shoot, maybe just to throw Molotov, it's a bit more stylish. Uh, you could be a nice uh, person in a circle of uh, like information. Yeah, because it's the ex-clubs, it's the ex-clubs. Yeah. 
in hotel and closer and all the new papers. Yeah, and uh, when you uh, use automatic gun, uh, you immediately treat it as uh, some reactionary, militaristic, and uh, maybe a dangerous person. So maybe I would prefer to have a mullet of, as you know, my red line, my limit, uh, and uh, not to switch to some more technical instruments uh, of uh, self-defense, because I treated self-defense. Uh, but uh, anyhow, uh, this this are the words I'm saying, saying like by phone or stay, saying from the stage. But uh, practically, I spent uh, months under the shelling, like uh, the area, like two minutes walk from my apartment was there. Stage. Like, there was a Hiroshima. Sorry. Uh, and yeah, uh, I feel it uh, on a very, you know, practical level, it touched and it changed my sensitivity. Anyhow, I am dealing with images, sometimes, much less, with words. I uh, got this permission to be out of Ukraine for some time, till 2nd of May, because I had to make my artwork, my installation in Venice. And I had to participate in production process, then they wanted me to be at the opening, and uh, like in a few days in Antwerp I have to be in discussion because there are a project of support of Ukraine between Muka Museum in Antwerp, Bozar in Brussels, and European Parliament. And there are my works exhibited in European Parliament also, and they want me to say something like, I uh, know, provocative to European Parliament members. So then I got this parent to go out of Ukraine till second of May. But when I went with it through pedestrian pass from Ukraine to Romania, like the border, border guards, they look like, okay, your documents are fine, but if you be not in time, like 10 years, like for everybody. Uh, so, in these conditions, I uh, uh, turn maybe uh, more, you know, practical. Practical, I understand that uh, weapons are our reality. We are attacked. Our houses are devastated. People uh, we love escape. They became refugees. People who were near us, they are killed. I was used to visit Vita often. My close friend lives there. I recognize all these houses, these streets on the photos of Vita Massacre. When I look at that body, I am in the next table in local cafe and drinking tea. And uh, this woman is raped and then killed. Or she she was standing at the bar. Maybe it's like a hallucination. But uh, I, I look at photos and I recognize the faces. Or I imagine. So, uh, Caroline, I for sure would not like to. I think I have different, like, different mindset, different political views. So on, but uh, you know when uh, uh, Russian soldiers will enter my house or my studio, I'll use what I have. That, uh, like uh, automatic gun is uh, technically better for this than I don't know glass or bottle or chair. But I'll defend myself and I'll defend both my life. In terms of talks, friends all over the world. Some are European and some are not. Some are white and some are black. Because we are very worried about Ukraine, but we are not worried about bombs in Syria or 
horrible wars that have been all along these years everywhere. And then we have the issue of Indian students who could not leave easily the borders, who were mistreated because of racism and so forth. So I tried to say, but uh, you're right, you're right, that this is a fact. We are more worried about a war within Europe, but also it is normal um, that we should not think that way. Uh, so I'm just asking you this because um, because it is what I hear, you know. Ah, the Europeans are now worried because they are bombed and their children are dying, but they were bombing other places just a short while ago and nobody talking about the babies and the rape. So, well, somebody. Not main media. Not main media. Not main media. That's, that's not their problem. No, it, it's, well, he, yeah, she's saying it's not your problem. But I just want your opinion on this because there is a strange situation of proximity. I mean, you know, I tried to say, but if my child is dead, I'm really devastated. If my neighbor's child is dead, I'm very, very sad. If my city, there's a child that's dead, I'm also sad. But there's something that, that causes in me a guilt of not being able to have the same amount of empathy the farther the distance is. So I just want to know your thoughts on this, if you're yeah, aware yeah, of these debates. Uh, yes, I, I, I am aware of these debates, and I have a very simple answer. Please worry about Syria more. Yes. But uh, uh, do not, please do not worry about Ukraine less because just because you didn't worry enough about Syria when it was needed. Like, uh, you know, if uh, you uh, have some limited amount of empathy and support, just please share it equally. But if you know this amount is growing, uh, don't say uh, we will not give you this amount you need because before we give less to those guys. You know, I totally understand, for example, really uh, in other contexts it would be irresponsible to say I understand people of Aleppo. But now I understand people of Aleppo because Russian Federation appointed General Alexander Dvornikov, who is responsible for Aleppo. for Aleppo, for using phosphor bombs, for using chemical weapons, they appointed him to be head of Ukrainian campaign, and like an uh, absolute butcher. Like uh, one who brings humanitarian catastrophes, one who is a professional in the field of war crimes. Now from Aleppo he is sent to Ukraine. So I understand people of Aleppo. And people from Syria also understand us. I had a, uh, it's a uh, example from uh, my new life. I was in Berlin when I escaped from Ukraine and was in Berlin. And uh, I had a conflict with a Russian speaker's woman. She, uh, in the first sight, uh, understands that I'm from Ukrainian, and we start argument, uh, very cr quiet, uh, and uh, uh, was a very big conflict between us and uh, from the German people. They just go through; they just uh, uh, on their face. They don't want to make something in this conflict. Uh, to calm us, and uh, after a few minutes, a Syrian man comes to me because she already called the police, uh, and uh, they just start to scream on her what you do, what your Russian do with us, and now with the Ukrainian, and they was very kind to me, they helped me, and uh, uh, it uh, uh, was a problem with the Syria, and it must be uh, end 
uh, must be uh, finished. And uh, n nobody don't want to finish it, so now it's a problem in Ukraine, in most closer to Ukraine, uh, to Europe. And uh, uh, what will be after, we will see if we don't manage it somehow. Okay, well, any questions? Any comments? Yes. Chairman, you need to Poi direi che, direi che questa maratona per oggi di parole di opere. I wouldn't want to comment till you have reminded me that I'm a German now. I'm born in Turkey and today is the 24th of April, which I carry the responsibility of my ancestors who have committed a genocide yes. 107 years ago. So that's why I want to comment on that, that we are all responsible. And in this exhibition, I remember again the creator and the director of the German institution when I say, so Girada's verses, which is connected to all the history, so I don't want to extend it to the 500 his uh, years history of the genocide and the exploitation, but if we as practitioners don't keep it um, real and always put on it on the uh, public and media, it's not going to change. So we are going to not learn from Syria, we are not going to learn from what is happening now, so it makes everything useless if we don't remember. Germany just stuck, as we see also in the pavilion in the Second World War. What happened before their uh, cruel uh, com uh, com um, commitment to the Armenian genocide, they never uh, give it uh, uh, the recognition. So I just want to say, actually, we have to think what happened and we have to think it uh, further and actually put more in action. So thank you for doing this work in the last uh, horrible two months, I can imagine what is it to be, but um, I think I appreciate that you are here and giving the work to us. Thank you.